Hey folks, today we're going to be looking at creating alpha masks inside of Touch Designer on content that doesn't natively have an alpha. Now this is something we've probably all experienced, whether it's on small projects or big projects, it always seems to happen where someone sends you an asset and it's an icon or some kind of animation and it's supposed to have an alpha background. For some reason, whether it's because of file formats or because of maybe just lack of knowledge on alpha channels and working on our kinds of projects, the asset creator doesn't actually end up including the alpha. And then you're kind of stuck wondering, well, do I have to wait till get a new asset before I can even start development? Or can I at least temporarily make a real time map that I can use, use that to remove some of the alpha and get working at least until the asset update comes around. Now, this is something that is all too common in my life. And that's why I've really found a good workflow for myself using channel mix top, blur top and thresh top. So what I'm going to do here is, is quickly make an example of what something like this might look like. So I've gone ahead and made a movie file in. I've made a constant that I'm going to use to basically just fill all of the alpha with black. So this is very likely what you'll receive. You'll receive some kind of piece of content. It's on a black background. You're like, oh, I wish I could just remove the black background and substitute it for alpha zero. Now, this is actually not too hard to do in Touch Designer in real time. Now, by all means, I should say these masks that we're going to create are not going to be perfect. So by all means, it's still worth getting the asset creator to actually include the alpha channel. But as a kind of temporary measure, it's a really super useful feature. So the first thing we're going to do is create a channel mix top. And this whole technique relies around the channel mix tops ability to move the data from different channels into other channels, which sounds simple and ends up being quite confusing to a lot of new users. So the first thing that confuses most users is when they see this kind of unnamed grid of values that kind of looks like a matrix and you know, it's got ones going diagonally down there. That looks nice, but what does it all mean? So the best way to think about the parameters of the channel mix is that each row is an output and each column is an input channel. Now I really wish, you know, derivative would include just little bits of text along the top here to say red, green, blue, and alpha, because I think that would make it a lot easier for folks to understand. But in the meantime, if you essentially think of red going across here, but also red coming down here, that's going to be your red output channel and your red input channel. For example, if I wanted to completely remove the alpha channel that already exists inside of the channel mix, all I have to do is go to the alpha and we can see here that the alpha input channel is being fully fed out to the alpha output channel. So I'm just gonna set that to zero. And now you'll immediately see that I can see my checkered background, which again, if you're new to touch designer and you don't know how to switch between the checkered background and the black background, if you go to the dialogues, actually edit preferences, tops, right here, viewer background, you can switch this between checkerboard and black. Now I like changing this to checkerboard when I'm working because it just really clearly lets my eye see where there is alpha and where there isn't alpha. But if you're doing more compositing workflows and just working on actual content, then maybe you actually want to keep it on black because it's a little bit better to work on. So now what I did here was I set my alpha input channel to zero on the alpha output channel, which means that this essentially has zero alpha across the board. So, so far we're making a little bit of progress, but our banana starting to look a little bit funny. It looks like our banana itself doesn't have a full alpha channel. Well, actually it has zero alpha channel. So the trick behind making your own mats using the channel mix is essentially redirecting your RGB channels into your alpha. And the easiest way to do that is to just think about this matrix. So I have my red input at the top. And if I wanted to send my red channel to my alpha, I could go ahead and just follow down the red column and put a one for that alpha. Now a really nice thing we can do is inside of the viewer of that top, if we activate it, is I can hit the A key and I can see the A in the bottom left corner and that's showing me just the alpha channel. Now I can also hit the R key and you can see when I do that, it says R at the bottom left and that's showing me just my red channels worth of data. Now the interesting thing is if I switch back and forth between my alpha and my R, you can see that these two things are exactly the same because my alpha channel only consists of the data inside of my red channel. So now we're starting to get a little bit more useful here, but 
you know, what we probably want to do is feed all three channels into the alpha. So I can then go ahead and say, okay, well, send my blue input into my alpha output, send my red input channel into my alpha output channel. And now we're starting to see, you know, it's, it's really not that bad already. And all we did was change a few parameters on the channel mix. And you can see if I switch over to my alpha channel, I'm going to have a moderately working alpha mat here. Now, just to test how this might work, I'm going to make a quick count.mov background video so that we can composite this new asset on top of it. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because what you'll notice with this method is that it doesn't really play well with content that is dark. So you can see here where the banana has these kind of dark spots on it, and in particular, this one kind of dark area here, it actually ends up being transparent to, to a certain degree because even the R, G, and B values added together that we fed in as the new alpha channel didn't really add up to enough value to actually make that opaque. So there's a few ways we can work around this, but even before we look at those ways, with just one simple operator, this channel mix operator, we have gone from a fully you know, one alpha channel to something that could be used, you know, in a pinch, whether you're working kind of on a gig somewhere and you real time need some kind of solution, or even just to make your test asset until that asset creator gets back to you. You know, this is really not a bad situation here, but we can do better. So let's figure out first and foremost, what if we wanted to even fill up some of these holes that have darker content in them? So the first thing I always do is then think about, okay, well, if I wanted to do that, I'm going to need to do some more compositing. So I want to turn this fully into just a black and white mat that I can use. Now it's easy to do with the channel mix still, because what we can say is, okay, well, if we just want to make all of the channels feed into all of the other channels and turn them all white, I can just go through and say, okay, well, take my red channel input, feed it to green, feed it to blue, take my gr green channel input, feed it to red, feed it to blue, and then take the blue channel input, also feed it into red and also feed it into green. So now essentially RGB, all of these are getting added together. All of these are going into all three of the channels as well as the alpha. And what you can see here is now we have essentially the same alpha map that we were seeing on our composite here, but now we have it as this layer that we can kind of composite with process a little bit and work with. So that's great. So even starting from here, our workflow is going to shift a little bit to be a kind of standard compositing workflow where we have a separate alpha map from our content. So I'm just going to even just go ahead and set this up here. I'm going to plug in my constant into my composite, plug my channel mix in, set it to multiply, and you can see now we're getting back to our content. So what can we do in between our channel mix to kind of process this mat a little bit, to make it a little bit more full and even try and fill in some of those darker areas. Now, one thing we could do is something as simple as a threshold because we know there is some data in there. You know, it's not pure zero. Now it might be pure zero if there's a purely black spot in the middle of a piece of content, but in most cases for all intent and purposes, there's probably gonna be some amount of data in there. So what I can do is create a threshold top in between my composite and channel mix. And then I can start to play with my threshold value here. And you can see if I move this threshold value up to near one, we're going to be able to clearly see all those areas where there's a little bit of dark content because now they're not getting thresholded. But once we start to pull this slider down and say, okay, well, everything that has a value of 0.459, is going to automatically become a white pixel. And you can see as we move that down, we're filling in these gaps that have some data, like we said. And we could even take this all the way down to something like 0 0.01, which essentially is going to translate into if there is almost any data inside of that pixel, make it white. And now you can see now we have this much more full, robust, thorough kind of alpha map. Now the edges are not going to be perfect and we'll come back to that in a second. But what you can see now is if we over this instead, those areas that we had that were darker, that were originally becoming see-through, now they're fully opaque. Now one of the challenges we're going to have as we kind of do these different processing is 
you know, does one process add a little bit of positivity, but also add a little bit of negative kind of artifacts? And we can see that this one creates a bit of a black border around the banana. And that's because if we ever went back and did a pixel by pixel inspection of the banana, a little bit, you know, there's probably a one pixel line around the edge of the banana that is going to be blending into that black background. And then when we go through our process of thresholding, that tiny bit of data that in the original content was rolling off into black is now a solid white pixel. So there's a few ways we can approach this. And what I like to do is, is now we're just thinking about textures. And what do I want to do if I want to kind of soften up these edges a little bit and then be able to choke them down a bit? Well, my first thought goes to blur. So what I can do is insert a blur top in between my channel mix and my threshold. And we're gonna see this is gonna have an interesting effect because as I turn up the blur, we're almost gonna see this comic book style outline, which is kind of a cool effect on its own. But the nice thing is as we kind of soften that edge, we can then go back to our threshold and actually increase the threshold to create a smoother edged mat while still remaining retaining all the information we want here. So what we can see is before we had it down here, we had the black background around it, and now we can start to choke down on that mat and say, you know what? I like just about here. That gives me enough of my banana's data, gets rid of the black background, all of the dark spots are filled in. Now you may end up losing a little bit of definition around the edges here, because as we can see, after I've done the blur and after I've done the threshold, the, the knob of the banana here is almost, is almost a smooth little curve. And if we compare that to the original, you know, the original had a bit of, of bumpy definition. And that's why I was saying, you know, a lot of these processes will never replace actually having the asset creator give you that full featured, beautiful alpha map. But especially in a pinch, you know, most people probably aren't going to notice that there's, you know, a few little nubs missing on the end of the banana which can be great to keep your development workflow up and running. It can be great as a live situation type of, oh my God, we need an alpha mat fast. So even just these simple operators using a channel mix, blur, and a threshold to create alpha mats, multiplying them against your original content can quickly and easily give you a, a really working alpha mat. Now, if we tried to test this with other content, what we're gonna see is the general process itself is gonna work. And let me actually turn the resolution of this up. And let's turn up the font size here. But what we're gonna see is that we're probably gonna need to dial in a little bit of these settings per content type. Because for example, we can see that there's a lot of artifacts around the letters here, which in the original source is very crisp and clean. Now, knowing that this is a much more kind of delicate or intricate, you know, lines, curves, smaller amounts of pixels when compared to a big old banana, probably my first thought is let me go over to my blur because I'm probably adding too much blur and that's just tripping everything up. So if I go over to my blur and start to turn it down, we can see here, it's really starting to clean up that mat. And actually you might find that in this case, because the text is, is really just a lot of straight lines and small curves, you know, everything in this especially is already uh, white color. Maybe we don't even need the blur. Look at that. Nice and easy going from fully black background with no alpha channel all the way to a pretty decent and respectable and usable alpha channel. So hopefully that helps. That's something I use regularly on projects and in my daily workflow whenever I need to take an asset and uh, give it an alpha channel. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.